Okay, here it is, the Velocity One flight controller from Turtle Beach. I actually just picked this up within the last two weeks, of course, right after I got an Xbox Series S for Christmas. And since then, I kid you not, I've been playing Microsoft Flight Simulator exclusively for the first time in my life. That's right, for the past two decades, I've been an X-Plane guy on a totally different system and a totally different setup. But here and now, I'm going to evaluate Microsoft Flight Simulator with this Turtle Beach control. I've got to say, I'm impressed by the product so far. This is not going to be a full review, more so my initial impressions. I've also got to tell you my background and what I'm basing all of this on. Since 2006, I've been a commercial pilot with the FAA, and I became a flight instructor in 2008. So I've got tons of background and experience flying actual planes. I know how it's supposed to feel and look and sound. Uh, I taught students how to understand this too. But how does it compare to flight simulation with this specific device? Does this make it a lot more real? Would I recommend this? Obviously, it's one of the more pricey units out there. But I got to say, you really do get what you pay for. So let me just begin with overall build quality. It is made of plastic, but it is impressive. You can tell there was a lot of thought and execution in the design of this. Well, let me start off with something as simple as this. Taking off this little top unit right here, it's magnetic, which is pretty cool because then there's nothing to break. There's no um, you know, button or hook or anything that's going to snap over time. You just lift that off. There's two magnets there. And this is how you secure the control unit to a desk. There's two clamps here down on the front side. You can't necessarily see them, but there's a screw here and there's a screw right here on the other side. But in the middle, stowed away, is this wrench. And this allows you to tighten and loosen the control unit to your desk. One of the most frustrating things in flight simulation, especially if you're taking this on and putting it off all the time, is not only the off on, but it's, does the device stay well connected to the actual thing you're connecting it to? Because otherwise, uh, this is sliding around, it's flopping all over the place, you pull the elevator too hard and the whole yoke comes off in your lap. You don't want that. So I've tightened this up pretty good. I love the way it does tighten. It's very firmly attached to anything I want here. Um, I mean, I have it right now on the desk, just this part, the lip, which, you know, looks like it could be as thin as a quarter inch. I think I could get this thing attached to a desk that might be one or two inches thick. Uh, so very versatile. Again, well thought out. I can definitely appreciate that. Um, I also like how there's a throttle quadrant that features the power levers here, but also the Cessna style controls for the throttle, the prop, and the mixture. Um, you can customize this, obviously, in, in which controls what, but if you're flying a, a turbojet or... An airliner, for example. Yeah, you're going to want these. You're going to want these hammers right here to have your hands on and feel the way it feels uh, versus if you're doing flight training on, you know, a Cessna, you're going to want these controls. If you are doing your flight training in real life, this is going to feel a lot more accurate um, than anything else. And I got to say, as for how these feel, uh, the levers here, um, a little bit loose, what I have preferred... Uh, a lot more tension, possibly, but it's not a deal breaker for me. Quite honestly, these things, as I tip them over here, uh, they're not falling over. So there is some resistance. It's just not an effort to get all of these forward and back. Uh, there is a detent position. And then it does look like there's kind of a secondary position you can put them in as well, too. I haven't really found out the exact uh, purpose for that yet or the configuration for that on Microsoft Flight Simulator. Again, I'm getting used to all this stuff. But I will say the, the customizable nature of this device, as well as what Flight Sim does, makes it so that the, the possibilities are literally endless. Okay, let me go into some other things that I really like. The trim wheel right here. This feels like an actual airplane. Now, in real life, the trim wheel would be somewhere else. It'd be a lot bigger. So I get that they had to fit that in right here between the control yoke and the throttle quadrant. But Man, this has just a good feel with those little bumps on it right there. And you can kind of just give it this touch while you're you know, flying with your left hand. You can kind of just play with it like that. A very accurate representation of what actual flying and piloting an airplane is like. I don't think I mentioned these 10 buttons. They're all customizable right above the, uh, 
the Cessna style throttles here. I've got them set right now, one for parking brake, one for reverse thrust, flaps up, flaps down, autopilot on, uh, a moving map that pops up, landing lights, as well as the uh, the gear toggle right there. So you, you can pretty much do uh, anything you want with those 10 buttons. Again, those are just nice tools to have. Another thing that's very cool on the front, and it's not I believe fully active yet is this enunciator panel. There are, let's see, one, two, three, six, uh, nine, 12 different lights here in front. Six on this side, there's six on the other side that you can't see. Right now, I have these lights configured as such um, where they're just colors. Uh, there's kind of this gold color on the throttles and right here on the control wheel, you can see those, those are uh, lit up right there. And then it's just green, uh, default green here. But I'm pretty sure in the future, there is going to be some integration between Flight Sim, the game, and this Turtle Beach controller, which is going to be very cool because then you'll actually be able to get real-time enunciators like for master caution, master warning, uh, low fuel, engine temperature, stall warning, uh, flaps down, landing gear, parking brakes, all that stuff. You wouldn't even have to look at the game screen. You can look right down and see it. And that would be something that is helpful, but also realistic to your gaming experience. I can't believe I didn't even get to this yet. And I understand it's not going to be extremely visible on your screen, but that is an LCD screen. Yes, on the yoke, on the flight yoke, there is an LCD screen. And what's cool about this, I won't demonstrate it right now. You can put this device alone into training mode. And what that allows you to do here, if I just go down to it, anything that I do, it's like, for example, right now, it's telling me the yoke. It's assigned to making the ailerons roll left and right. And then it gives me an indication of exactly how much input I'm putting into the device. So you can just sit here with the game totally off, look at this and figure out what all the buttons do and what all the controls do. And again, there is a uh, prop control, uh, a small, you know, single engine prop control airplane as well as a multi-engine control default setting that you can put this on for the for the, for the difference in, in buttons and controls. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, uh, a lot more to this, including the switches here on the actual control wheel. There's POV switches on the right and left side, and there's also hat switches on both sides, and there's also um, kind of a special extra button here. Now, these are most important for... Uh, the view controls. And in fact, I haven't even stepped you inside the airplane yet, but let's do that now. So, I mean, literally watch as I turn the yoke to the right. There you see it depicted on the game. And as I turn it to the left, you see it depicted on the game. I'll go back to neutral, go ahead and pull this elevator back, pulling it forward. I mean, you can really see, and I'm going slow here. I don't want to bang things around, but uh, you can really see how this responds. So what about the thought of now that you've spent a pretty penny on this Turtle Beach Velocity One flight controller, do you actually also need rudder pedals to go with it? And I'm here to say maybe not. I mean, in real life, yes, that would make it more accurate to have your feet uh, controlling and involved on takeoffs and landings and ground operations. But check out these trigger buttons on the right and left side. When I move them, and actually, let me go ahead and tilt the camera down here. When I move them, you see the rudders moving. And actually right on top of them are brake buttons for the right and left side, just like a real airplane. So if I hold those down and you can't really see that, but brake on the right side, brake on the left side. So this is highly accurate. I can control this plane, all three axes right here with the control wheel. Again, would rudder pedals add to the experience? Would it make it more realistic? Yeah, but... Um, we understand the constraints and you could definitely have full control, feel like you have great full control over the airplane without the rudder pedals. Um, also, while I'm here, um, I talked about uh, these hat switches. These are great because on the left and right side, you have total control over view uh, inside the airplane, outside the airplane, and also how to reset those views. So let me give you an idea of, of what's going on here. I will hit the right hat button or sorry, the, the right reset button. And that puts me obviously in the default cockpit view. On the left side here, if I hit that main button, that brings me outside. Now that I'm outside, I'll use the POV button to give you a quick look one, sa one side, the other side, the front and the back. Now I see why you might want to use those, but how about this on the right side? Now I can scroll all the way around the plane. I can go higher. 
I can go lower, and obviously I can do this in flight as well. I'm just doing it here on the ground now so you can get a better picture. Um, but with your mouse, now that you've got that connected too, you can actually zoom in and out simply with the scroll wheel. I mean, I think this is so cool. Watch, watch how close, watch the view we can get of this airplane here and there, pretty much any way you want to view it, you can do it. Now, you want to reset it, you're in the middle of flying, bang, one button. You want to go back inside, bang, left button right there. You want to look inside the cockpit of this TBM, no problem. Simply scro scroll around right there with that switch. You want to reset it because you're looking backwards, left button. It literally is as simple as that. And these can all be customizable. There's also rudder trim, I think, on my right hat switch, left and right. There's aileron trim on my left side. So full and complete control. I really like this device. Okay, so now how about we see what this controller is like in an actual flight sim environment. I just took off from Livermore. I put this thing on autopilot. Uh, I'm not talking to ATC. This is not a real flight by any means. I just want to show you these controls. And what's great is that, you know, the buttons are laid out. This thing is so ergonomic that I can leave my hands on this control wheel and virtually do anything. I'm inside the cockpit. Now I'm outside the cockpit, scrolling around the airplane. Obviously, the heads up display is on the screen. I want to reset my view. Simple as that. I want to go back inside and reset the view there. Simple as that. I want to look around here. No problem. If I want to take a closer look in on the instruments, I just zoom in with the mouse and maybe I'll eventually set this up so that it's doing it with the um, with the control here. So I do have one hand off the, the control yoke right now, but again, you can scroll around, you can look up and down, touch all the instruments, do pretty much everything you need all right here. Uh, in real life, obviously the layout is different, but when you're flight simming, to be able to keep your hands on the controls and manipulate so many things in a small space, uh, like I said before, very well thought out, this product. Last thing, and I've also heard this as a criticism, how does the control unit actually feel? And what about that detent right there? See when I bring the ailerons uh, to having no pressure on them, it detents and it defaults right into the middle right there. Same thing with the elevator. It'll kind of go into that happy spot if I push too far, snaps back out, pull too hard, snaps right back there. You know, in real life, a lot of airplanes, they don't have that, but they do have kind of that sweet spot of where the, the flight control surfaces are neutral and the control just naturally sits. So I can't say that this is 100% accurate, but let me also assure you, if you've heard other reviews, um, you know, being critical of this, uh, this is not a deal breaker for me at all. When you're smoothly flying the airplane, all you kind of really feel is just a little bit of a click once you pass that completely neutral spot. It's it's not a big deal. Same thing with the elevator as the aileron. There are those neutral spots, but uh, again, it's not a big deal at all. I, I should also share with you, and I talked about this little LCD panel here. I don't know, maybe it's like one inch by one and a half inches, but to the right of that here are all the Xbox buttons, A, B, X, and Y. There's the main menu Xbox button here. Then there's also one for switching your screen, one for screen capture, and one for the play and pause control. So you can turn your Xbox on with this. You can have full and complete control. You don't actually need your controller anymore. If you just want to play Flight Sim, you can ditch the controller for just a little bit. Um, I have, by the way, I've added um, just the mouse to my setup uh, because like I said, it it has made the experience, I think, just a, a little bit better. So I definitely use a mouse. And I'm also highly considering adding just a, not a Bluetooth because Xbox doesn't do that, but just a USB keyboard uh, because I do feel like typing in airports and other things like that would be nice. Um, I am limited here on the desk in terms of space. Uh, so maybe a thin, small keyboard. Actually, maybe I could put it right on my lap when I do flight sim. So overall, final and closing thoughts. Um, yes, this is pricey. Yes, um, you know, in terms of other flight sim options, there are more simplistic things. There are cheaper things. Um, but as somebody who's done the real thing, I've got to say, you know, if I tried to design something better than this, I don't know that I could. If you get this and whether you've been a pilot or not, I think this is going to help you in that realistic flight sim environment. Good luck. Happy flying. 
And next time I'll do a video with a more complete and detailed review, maybe some tips and tricks that I've learned.